Rule number one, never lose money. Rule number two, never forget rule number one. If you buy things far below what they're worth and you buy a group of them, you basically don't lose money. Remember that the stock market is a manic depressive. Should you find yourself in a chronically leaking boat, energy devoted to changing vessels is likely to be more productive than energy devoted to patching leaks. The most important thing to do if you find yourself in a hole is to stop digging. Price is what you pay. Value is what you get. Beware the investment activity that produces applause. The great moves are usually greeted by yawns. For the investor, a too high purchase price for the stock of an excellent company can undo the effects of a subsequent decade of favorable business developments. Risk comes from not knowing what you are doing. Never invest in a business you cannot understand. If returns are going to be 7 or 8 percent and you're paying 1 percent for fees, that makes an enormous difference in how much money you're going to have in retirement. In the business world, the rearview mirror is always clearer than the windshield. Time is the friend of the wonderful company, the enemy of the mediocre. The key to investing is not assessing how much an industry is going to affect society or how much it will grow, but rather determining the competitive advantage of any given company, and above all, the durability of that advantage. Who do you want to see in the following video? Let me know in the comment section below. The three most important words in investing are margin of safety. On the margin of safety, which means don't try and drive a 9, 800 pound truck over a bridge that says it's, you know, capacity, 10,000 pounds. But go down the road a little bit and find one that says capacity, 15,000 pounds. It's far better to buy a wonderful company at a fair price than a fair company at a wonderful price. If a business does well, the stock eventually follows. For the investor, a too high purchase price for the stock of an excellent company can undo the effects of a subsequent decade of favorable business developments. Only buy something that you'd be perfectly happy to hold if the market shut down for 10 years. All there is to investing is picking good stocks at good times and staying with them as long as they remain good companies. I never attempt to make money on the stock market. I buy on the assumption that they could close the market the next day and not reopen it for five years. It is a terrible mistake for investors with long term horizons, among them pension funds college endowments, and savings-minded individuals to measure their investment risk by their portfolio's ratio of bonds to stocks. Successful investing takes time, discipline, and patience. No matter how great the talent or effort, some things just take time. You can't produce a baby in one month by getting nine women pregnant. Calling someone who trades actively in the market an investor is like calling someone who repeatedly engages in one-night stands a romantic. The stock market is designed to transfer money from the active to the patient. If you aren't thinking about owning a stock for 10 years, 
Don't even think about owning it for 10 minutes. Our favorite holding period is forever. An investor should act as though he had a lifetime decision card with just 20 punches on it. Time is the friend of the wonderful company, the enemy of the mediocre. Why not invest your assets in the companies you really like? As Mae West said, too much of a good thing can be wonderful. The business schools reward difficult complex behavior more than simple behavior, but simple behavior is more effective. Check out our unique collection of original funny gifts for investors created by stock market enthusiasts. Surprise someone you care about and put a smile on their face. Click the link in the description below. There seems to be some perverse human characteristic that likes to make easy things difficult. The most important quality for an investor is temperament, not intellect. You need a temperament that neither derives great pleasure from being with the crowd or against the crowd. Success in investing doesn't correlate with IQ. What you need is the temperament to control the urges that get other people into trouble in investing. The stock market is a no-called strike game. You don't have to swing at everything. You can wait for your pitch. You don't need to be a rocket scientist. Investing is not a game where the guy with the 160 IQ beats the guy with 130 IQ. What counts for most people in investing versus saving is not how much they know, but rather how realistically they define what they don't know. There is nothing wrong with a know-nothing investor who realizes it. The problem is when you are a know-nothing investor, but you think you know something. Forecasts may tell you a great deal about the forecaster. They tell you nothing about the future. Buy a stock the way you would buy a house. Understand and like it such that you'd be content to own it in the absence of any market. It's better to have a partial interest in the Hope Diamond than to own all of a rhinestone. You only have to be able to evaluate companies within your circle of competence. The size of that circle is not very important. Knowing its boundaries, however, is vital. Diversification is protection against ignorance. It makes little sense if you know what you are doing. Wide diversification is only required when investors do not understand what they are doing. Opportunities come in frequently. When it rains gold, put out the bucket, not the thimble. We always live in an uncertain world. What is certain is that the United States will go forward over time. For 240 years, it's been a terrible mistake to bet against America, and now is no time to start. American business, and consequently a basket of stocks, is virtually certain to be worth far more in the years ahead. I won't say if my candidate doesn't win, and probably half the time they haven't. I'm going to take my ball and go home. Widespread fear is your friend as an investor because it serves up bargain purchases. Whether we're talking about socks or stocks, 
I like buying quality merchandise when it is marked down. The best thing that happens to us is when a great company gets into temporary trouble. We want to buy them when they're on the operating table. Most people get interested in stocks when everyone else is. The time to get interested is when no one else is. You can't buy what is popular and do well. The most common cause of low prices is pessimism, sometimes pervasive, sometimes specific to a company or industry. We want to do business in such an environment, not because we like pessimism, but because we like the prices it produces. It's optimism that is the enemy of the rational buyer. After 25 years of buying and supervising a great variety of businesses, Charlie Munger and I have not learned how to solve difficult business problems. What we have learned is to avoid them. Speculation is most dangerous when it looks easiest. Keep things simple and don't swing for the fences. When promised quick profits, respond with a quick no. Half of all coin flippers will win their first toss. None of those winners has an expectation of profit if he continues to play the game. You've got to keep control of your time, and you can't unless you say no. You can't let people set your agenda in life. In the world of business, the people who are most successful are those who are doing what they love. It is not necessary to do extraordinary things to get extraordinary results. You know, you keep doing the same things, and you keep getting the same result over and over again. Tell me who your heroes are, and I'll tell you who you'll turn out to be. The best thing I did was to choose the right heroes. Chains of habit are too light to be felt until they are too heavy to be broken. Investors should remember that excitement and expenses are their enemies. The most important investment you can make is in yourself. I insist on a lot of time being spent almost every day to just sit and think. That is very uncommon in American business. I read and think. So I do more reading and thinking and make less impulse decisions than most people in business. Read 500 pages like this every day. That's how knowledge works. It builds up, like compound interest. All of you can do it, but I guarantee not many of you will do it. One can best prepare themselves for the economic future by investing in your own education. If you study hard and learn at a young age, you will be in the best circumstances to secure your future. Imagine that you had a car, and that was the only car you'd have for your entire lifetime. Of course, you'd care for it well, changing the oil more frequently than necessary, driving carefully, etc. Now consider that you only have one mind and one body. Prepare them for life. Care for them. You can enhance your mind over time. A person's main asset is themselves, so preserve and enhance yourself. I had a great teacher in life, my father. But I had another great teacher in terms of profession, in terms of Ben Graham. I was lucky enough to get the right foundation very early on. And then basically I didn't listen to anybody else. I just look in the mirror every morning and the mirror always agrees with me. And I go out and do what I believe I should be doing. And I'm not influenced by what other people think. If you want to learn more about how to invest, check out one of the videos you see on the screen.